Here we go. All right, so uh, welcome to Astronomy 122, Stellar Astronomy. My name is Andrea Gehring. My pronouns are she and her. Uh, my contact information is listed on this slide for your reference. I prefer email and I'm generally really fast at responding to emails within about 24 hours. Uh, but if you want to book an appointment, a video appointment to chat with me one on one, then you can do so using this Calendly link. And this information is also on our Moodle page. So here's what we're going to do today. I want to start off with some introductions. Uh, and then we're going to do a little overview of the course so that you can uh, see what to expect out of this class. Uh, we'll do a little icebreaker activity so that you can get to know one another in small groups. And then we'll jump into some astronomy and um, start to learn how we uh, find stars in the sky and other objects in the sky using the celestial coordinate system. And then finally, we'll, we'll um, apply that to um, some actual stars and get a little preview of our final project for the term. All right, so starting off with introductions. Um, again, I'm Andrea and pronouns are she, her. Um, I am originally from Colorado. I went to college at the Colorado School of Mines in Golden, which uh, is in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. So I've always been connected to the outdoors. I moved to Oregon for graduate school in 2019, where I earned my PhD in physics. Oh, well, I've moved well before that. I moved in 2010 when I graduated. I got my PhD in 2019. And then after that, I came to Lane Community College to start teaching astronomy and physics. Um, let's see, the other important life event I'll list here is I adopted some kitten cats um, in fall of 2020. Uh, you'll probably hear them running around in the background occasionally. They're a little rambunctious in the morning, especially. Uh, this is Ruby, this is Aiko. So maybe you'll see them uh, make an appearance occasionally. So this picture is kind of emblematic of some of the things that I like to do when I'm not thinking about physics and astronomy. Um, I like to run, hike, bike, ski, and do yoga, basically anything that gets me moving and gets me outside. Um, I love to cook because I love to eat. And so those two things for me are hand in hand. I'm an avid reader. Um, lately, it's a lot of nonfiction books, but I also uh, am kind of a news junkie. And I like to watch birds and also watch my cats watch birds out of my window. All right, so that's enough about me. Um, I want to welcome you to your class community. And this is a, you know, a, a community of individuals who are all coming from different places. And we are all different individuals with different backgrounds. And so we're all going to see the universe through a slightly different lens. And that's going to, you know, stem from our identities, our interests and our beliefs. And in this class, we um, will also each have unique strengths and unique challenges that we bring to the table. And so um, because I want to respect and honor the diversity of everyone in our classroom, uh, these are going to be our class agreements. First of all, every one of you is responsible for nurturing a safe and welcoming environment for every other student. Um, you're expected to share your strengths freely and generously. So when you have something to share, be sure to bring that out. And then be open and vulnerable um, about your challenges. There's lots of challenges right now, not only in the classroom, as there always are challenges in the classroom, but it, in the world at large, of course, during our global pandemic. So um, I know that this is a tough time to, to be learning and to be you know, engaging in education. And I honor all of you for um, being here and showing up. And um, the more open and vulnerable you can be, especially with me about your challenges, the more I can help you to succeed. All right, the um, fourth thing I will ask you is to be patient, especially with yourself, because um, some of the material that we're going to learn about in this class is uh, very different than things that you might have encountered before. And it takes time for our minds to grow and, you know, make sense of new information. So be patient with that process. Don't necessarily expect everything to click right away. And then finally, I want you to believe in and basically cheerlead for each other. Um, and in this way, we'll you know, be supportive of everyone and pull everyone along together. Okay, so a few things about Zoom etiquette. Um, I have a few specific tips. 
Uh, one of them is just to cut down on background noise. Uh, be sure to stay muted unless you're speaking. You're welcome to unmute at any time if you wanna jump in with a question. Um, and for video, I would ask that you share if you are willing to share. I understand there's many reasons that you might not want to share video, especially at 8 a.m. Um, but I find that the video helps me to feel less isolated in class and it might help you too. Um, when nobody has their video on, it can feel to me like I'm talking to myself and that can be a little awkward. I don't know if you've ever given a practice presentation to your pets or to you know your computer, but it's not as engaging as it is to talk to actual human beings. Um, and uh, in group work, you might want to also screen share. So um, when you do, if you do feel that you want to screen share during small group um, activities, make sure to ask your group members for permission first. It can be a little jarring if someone jumps into screen sharing and Zoom takes over your whole screen and you're not expecting it. And then just, um, you know, for your own privacy, share only the screen that's actually relevant uh, to the work at hand. All right. So um, I want you to just make sure that you can find some essential features here. Um, depending on what version of Zoom you have, your raise hand button will be at a different place. You might see it right at the bottom of your screen. You might have to open the participants tab. It might be under a reactions button. All right, I'm seeing some hands start to raise, so awesome. All right, looks like some of you have found some of the other reactions. Cool, so um, that's just for, for your own, um, you know, benefit to be able to find the raise hand button. That just helps your uh, video box jump to the top of my little list of video boxes. And that way I can see that you specifically have a question. So that's something that you can do to get my attention if you have a question during class. All right, so I'm gonna, and I can manually lower all of your hands, I believe. So I can do lower all hands and reset us. Um, and then you can also give other reactions if you feel like it during class, if you have, you know, something that you want to express, there's lots of fun reaction buttons, especially in the new Zoom update. So if you're not seeing all these things, uh, you can, you know, download the newest version of Zoom from the Zoom website. And not only does it have these reactions, it also has um, stronger security settings. So that might be something that you want to do. Okay, as we go through the class, I'll use symbols to kind of guide um, what we're doing. Um, so I'll frequently ask you polls and you'll know because there'll be a little poll symbol on the slide. Sometimes I'll ask you to write something in the chat and submit it and that will have a special icon as well. And sometimes I'll ask you to think and write uh, just individually reflecting on a question, not in the chat, just on your own scrap paper or whatever else you might have on hand. Um, so let's try that. Um, go ahead and open up the chat. Go ahead and find that. And then uh, please type into the chat. You can type it to everyone or you can, um, if you click the blue everyone button, you can type it to me specifically if you find me in that list. Um, and just tell me your name, pronouns, and your favorite object in the sky. And the way these chat questions will work is I'll give you about a minute to think about and formulate your response. So don't hit send yet and I will tell you when to hit send. Everyone has some connection to astronomy, right? Everyone has looked up at the night sky at some point. So I think that that's um, important to reflect on as we go through the class is how does what we're learning about connect to your own experience as a human being living on earth, peering up at the sky. So that'll lead us into our course overview. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how this course will work and what we're going to cover. Um, some of the boring things first. The syllabus is on Moodle. You should have already read through that um, to understand my policies, um, grading system, etc. cetera. Um, our textbook is an open source textbook um, on openstacks.org. So this is free to read online. And then Starry Night is a virtual planetarium software that we're going to use for mostly homework, but probably some in-class activities as well. And this is what you can purchase at the bookstore. You can read the textbook through Starry Night, but you don't have to. You can also just read the textbook on the OpenStax website. So um, on to the exciting things, what are we gonna talk about in this class? So um, I chose this image to represent what we're going to learn in this class. 
Um, this has a lot going on in it. So you can see many different stars of different colors, um, some of them more densely clustered. Uh, some of them seem to be spaced farther apart. And at the left, we have this kind of beautiful milky cloudy nebula. And um, all of this is part of the process of kind of the endless cycling of material uh, that, that is always happening in our universe as stars are born from these nebulae, uh, live through their life cycles, and then die sometimes explosively, putting that material back into space where it can again become new stars. So we're gonna learn all about that process in this class, as well as some of the specific, um, you know, I guess I would call them life events in the life of a star. What happens to a star after it's formed and what governs where, where, when it actually dies. Um, so this is a star cluster that we're looking at, um, and this is a nebula in the foreground. Um, okay, so the way that we'll talk about this, this week we'll talk about how to find stars, um, what their distances are, and then we'll take a couple of weeks to look at starlight, how we measure starlight, and what we can learn from it. Uh, we'll cover our sun as a kind of classic example of a very average star, uh, and then we'll learn about other types of stars. And then finally, we'll cover their birth, lives, and death. And then um, there's one week at the end that I've uh, held for just final presentations. And most likely, there will be one day at the, uh, in that last week of class where we'll do a final review as well. OK, we will have two exams. There will be a midterm exam in week seven and a final exam during finals week. Um, the midterm exam during week seven will happen instead of your homework. And so that way there's not, it, it won't be like an extra thing that you have to do. Um, I do have a day of class set aside for this um, so that you can join class. You can do the exam during class if you want to so that you can ask me questions. Uh, otherwise though, it's a take home. Okay, but there's more than astronomy that you'll get out of this class. Dang it, why does this keep happening to me? Okay, well, this is fine. So um, I have all of this, the course learning outcomes on a specific study guide, and I'll continue to add to this as we go through the term. Um, I'll also add some other study resources here. So we have our course learning outcomes, um, but I also have a few other learning goals. I want you to be curious and ask questions, and I want you to nurture that curiosity in that class and uh, figure out how to formulate better questions, actually, uh, than the ones that you might be starting out with. I also want you to get some skills working with data, interpreting graphs, and using um, data to uh, support your arguments and archaeologically about the content in this class. And of course, there's the, the knowledge component uh, that we'll get out of this class. Um, and I also hope that you'll strengthen your studying skills through this class. Um, I find that many students come into college without having very effective study skills because whatever has worked for them uh, in high school, um, you know, it might not have been as demanding as the college environment. And I find that if you, um, you know, continue to apply some of those less effective study skills, it's not going to work as well as it once did. So in our study sessions, which I'll host throughout the term, I'm gonna have the first couple of study sessions specifically focusing on effective study skills that are backed by the science on learning. All right, so those are some of the non-knowledge related course goals that I have for you. Um, any questions about what we're going to learn in this class? All right, so let me fix my screen share here. And just briefly, how will we learn in this class? Um, so I'm following what's called the study cycle. Um, and so before class, uh, you should preview the material by looking at that week's study guide doing the reading, watching any relevant videos. Um, sometimes I might have starry night exercises before class, and there's always a brief pre-class quiz. Um, then during class, uh, we'll do activities. It'll be very interactive, and you'll have time to ask questions. Um, you'll review the material on your own using all of the different graded activities that I've set out, uh, the forum, homework, which will include some starry night exercises, and also working on little pieces of your project each week. Um, you can study by attending our weekly study sessions and also, of course, your own independent study. And if you create study materials, some students, you know, make something as a way to study. 
and you want to share those with other students, I think that would be really cool. And I have a whole forum on Moodle set aside for you to do whatever you want with. So you can share stuff with each other there. And then how will you check your understanding? Um, primarily uh, on exams and projects, but also the weekly homework is a good chance to check your understanding. You can also return to the pre-class quizzes. And if there's something that you weren't quite clear on the first time that you took the quiz, you can have a chance to retake it after class um, so that you can go back and you know, make sure that you're understanding all of the topics that you're expected to. Okay, so why are there so many different little things? You know, why have I designed this course this way? It's so that we are walking up this um, kind of pyramid of different ways to learn. So starting with very low level remembering, um, you know, vocabulary words. That's something that I expect to, you to hit on those pre-class quizzes. And then we'll try to understand material by going through lecture. Um, you'll apply and analyze those ideas on in-class activities and then evaluating other people's arguments on the forums. And finally, you'll create something new via projects. So all of the things that I've built in this class are carefully designed to, to walk you through many different levels of thinking. So that this is not just a class about memorizing facts, but it's about doing something with that information. All right, so our grade breakdown looks like this. Um, you'll notice that the pre-class quizzes, in-class activities, the forums and the homeworks all of these are slightly more than 50% of your grade um, as a, and the weekly reflections, I guess, too. So I think that adds up to something like 55% of your grade. And these, you have the chance to earn 100% on. Um, you'll have the opportunity to retake the pre-class quizzes and the homeworks three times so that if you have, you know, uh, you know, things that you missed the first time around, you can go ahead and take those again. Um, there, these will all be short, so I don't expect you to be spending tons of time on this class. But as with any class uh, for credit class, uh, this class is expected to take you 12 hours of both in and out of class time. So that's the expectation for four credits. Um, all right, so the rest of your grade is composed of projects and the exams. So each exam 10% and the project is worth 25%. And like I said, you'll do this in little bits each week. So it'll be very approachable. And there will be one final project um, that's worth 7%. Um, so that, that's the biggest chunk of this. And that's gonna be a five minute presentation or a five minute video. You can do that individually or you can do it in groups. So the format is up to you. You can take a video of you doing a skit or, or a dance or something. Um, I really would like to see you get as creative as you can here. Okay. So um, we're going to do lots of group activities in this class. And because I've been talking for too long, we're going to do one now. And um, my instructions for these are to just make sure that everyone gets a chance to speak. Uh, the more that you personally engage, the more that you'll get out of it. Um, as you go through, keep an open mind, be willing to make mistakes. Uh, failure is how we learn. So if you make a mistake, someone else can jump in and uh, point out your error and you can learn from that. So keep an open mind and you know, don't be defensive there. Um, that's why we're here. And then also keep a record of any notes that you have or questions as you work um, to make your thought process visible to me and also for yourself to have a reference for later. Um, you'll have a specific way to do this, so I'll show you that. And if you can't participate in a group activity for some reason, maybe you don't have a solid connection today or you know, maybe you've got you know, some you know, chaos in your background and you simply don't wanna participate with video and audio, then you can stay in the main room. That's not a big deal. Um, but I just want to make sure that everyone who does join a room gets the um, advantage of others in that room who will participate with them. All right. Any questions about these sort of basic guidelines for activities? All right. Um, specifically, it might help to, to um, assign roles to yourself. If these don't feel helpful to you, then you don't have to use them. Um, but I personally, having been a part of many Zoom workshops at this point, find these roles helpful to set. So um, I would recommend that one of you be the facilitator who helps to keep the group on task and also shares the screen. Um, the recorder can keep notes in collaborative documents. We'll use Google Docs and the reporter can report back to the main group. So very basic um, roles. Uh, and if you, there's something else that makes more sense to you, then you can do that. 